This is African View with me, Yodi Sarmaso. African View is a program on social, cultural, historical, investment, any kind of African issues that we are going to discuss on. To discuss with me on African continental free trade area, I have here with me Mr. Midian Hapte, senior expert on trade in services with the African Continental Free Trade Area Support Unit and Interim Secretariat with the African Union Commission. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Okay, let's start with the basic, the fundamentals, and what is African Continental Free Trade Area and what does your department do when it gives support? What kind of support do you provide for the African Continental Free Trade? If I go straight to, to your question, I think it's better if I say something about the department, then we can say something about the African Continental Free Trade Area. So uh, the Trade and Industry Department at the African Union Commission is one of uh, the many departments there. So basically the mandate for uh, this department is to uh, coordinate the economic and uh, trade uh, issues and aspects of uh, uh, African uh, countries. So um, it could be to have uh, African policies that will, uh, you know, bring about a positive change in the economies and trades of uh, African countries. Um, if I put it that way, I think it can capture many of those things. So within that structure, within that mandate, the African Continental Free Trade Area would be one of uh, the items. Of course, there are other activities like uh, um, industrialization, commodity strategy, um, and lately, of course, uh, issues like e-commerce, so on and so forth. Uh, it's still under within that uh, department's mandate. So African Continental Free Trade Area would be uh, perhaps not only for the department, even for the commission itself, it's uh, one of the flagship projects. So uh, for that, uh, um, as a department, it coordinates the meetings and negotiations of uh, uh, these 55 countries. Um, perhaps, you know, you can develop working papers, you can um, manage the negotiations, so on and so forth. So it serves us basically as secretariat of all these negotiations. Yeah, so basically what you do is you provide technical assistance to facilitate the smooth uh, implementation of the African continental free trade area. Yes, for the negotiations. Basically, of course, they are, they are the members who will be running the show, but... It is still at the theoretical level. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about the African continental free trade area. What is its significance going to be? Basically, it's aimed at bringing Africans together in trade and development to develop together. So how is it going to turn out? You know, what are the steps being taken? Uh, yes, um, perhaps, uh, yeah, it's more than the theoretical aspect because now we, we have seen uh, uh, so many achievements already on the ground. So, but if we go back a little bit in terms of uh, why we have it here and what are the basic reasons, rationale, having this continental free trade area, um, it will take us back to uh, some years back, perhaps maybe 40, 50 years back. Um, of course, the, the African countries when they established an uh, organization for African Union, that was with, uh, with uh, reason, so many reasons, of course. But uh, the political aspect was uh, at the forefront. But uh, then afterwards, of course, um, the economic aspect was understood to be also very important. So, uh, because if you look at uh, the economic status and where they uh, stand uh, at, uh, within the global framework, you'll find uh, it's a bit of a troubled continent uh, economically. Even if you have all the resources, all the 
necessary human capital or labor, but uh, this continent has not benefited as much as it should. Mm -hmm. So the starting point was why? Uh, of course, everybody agrees, uh, you know, things have to change. Uh, better life um, has to be recorded you know, in all its aspects. So, uh, they, if you go back, like, perhaps in 1980s even, there was a, a consensus among the heads of states, which was, of course, um, documented as a Lagos plan of actions, which drives, at least it shows the architecture of African integration. And then, of course, uh, uh, by 1990s, to be specific, 1991, um, they agreed on one agreement, which is called Abuja Treaty, which is uh, arguably one of the consequential agreement for African integration. Uh, basically, it's, it tells you about the end game of uh, the integration for Africa. In that treaty, you'll find African economic community. African economic community will be the end game. That is where we should go. Uh, and uh, to do that, it has phases, steps to be followed, one after the other. And uh, time-wise, it will take perhaps some like 34 years, from 1991 up to somewhere like, uh, I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, 2028, 2029 would be the year where we'll hopefully we'll see the African economic community by itself. You, we are creating one, one community within Africa. Mm -hmm. And to do that, of course, yeah, of, of, who, everybody agrees uh, when they started it, it was a fragmented continent mm -hmm. because uh, of historical reasons, so on and so forth. So they put some phases, like um, first formation of uh, uh, regional economic communities, um, having um, customs union at a certain stage, um, even monetary issues should be dealt with, so that uh, towards, towards the end we need to have uh, one currency, so on and so forth. So even if yeah, the name captures it very simply, African economic community, but within which there are uh, so many things to be achieved first. Mm -hmm. To go there, the African continental free trade area would be just one of the fundamental uh, background that you can lay, based on which the others will follow. So that is, that is where the African... Okay, let's... Uh uh, put some emphasis on the regional uh, economic communities. You said that's one step uh, leading towards the uh, African co economic community. So, but when you look at uh, the RECs, the regional economic communities, some of them, they are really good, especially the Western community and the Southern community, they are doing well and they, are, they have really integrated in terms of uh, trade and other agreements as compared to, for example, the North or the Eastern African trade communities. So have you learned any lessons uh, from that? Have taken any lessons in order to move forward? And how you are going to make these regional communities that were not that much successful moving forward, share experiences and integrate them to work towards the free trade area that you are talking about? Absolutely. I mean. These regional economic communities, they are, uh, to put the exact phrasing, would be the building blocks of the continental issues. It's not only for trade, uh, but all other development or political or humanitarian issues. Rex would be a stepping stone towards developing one uh, continental agenda. And of course, like I said earlier, this uh, Rex, uh, the regional economic uh, communities or uh, organizations um, are within that phase of the forming the African economic community. So first, of course, they will be formed here and there or strengthening them if uh, they exist already. 
and it's, if they don't exist, to form new ones even. So that has been done already. So there are eight regional economic communities recognized by uh, African Union. And um, definitely, always, uh, some, as they say, small is, small, small is beautiful. So when you are smaller in number and having your own uh, regional uh, discussions, maybe you'll find it easier to have consensus, one, and also to advance your um, uh, agenda further. So uh, in the south, in the west, east, central, north, uh, we have them all. And um, uh, a lot has, has been learned from, from their experience. Even for the African continental free trade area itself, before member states sit down and discuss uh, it's uh, the negotiation structure. Mm -hmm. So you will have to go through the discussion with, with these uh, uh, regional economic communities. So we have, we have done that so many times. We, if there are any uh, documentation or uh, anything that member states will look at at a later stage, then the RECs will first sit down and clear it to the next stage. So, uh, in fact, we call it Continental Task Force. Okay. Continental Task Force is one part of, even for the CFT purpose, one of the uh, stages we have to pass through. That means that's where they can clearly, uh, the exactly, they share their experience, uh, they uh, look into, you know, um, even some of their members, you know, could have concern uh, on this thought, it will be reflected there.